Now, Xenophanes has a slightly different reputation from Pythagoras. Pythagoras didn't write, or we don't know of any of his writings, and he got a whole community started, ultimately, you know, at least one place in Italy, of followers, and it became a cult to worship numbers uh, and have these views of the soul. Xenophanes, by contrast, was a poet and philosopher. That is, he wrote, he actually wrote poetry, and we do have some fragments. And he's most noted for being the teacher of Parmenides. Parmenides being somebody that we'll see shortly had a tremendous influence, or we'll, we'll see what he had to say, but he also had a tremendous influence on Plato and Socrates' views, it seems. Now, Xenophanes had a lot to say about rationality, about what's reasonable to believe in, where you could apply it. And what was unique about Xenophanes, especially for a poet, somebody who was very familiar with the epic poems, was that even questions about the gods, about religious beliefs, are subject to reason, to deciding, does it make sense, does it not make sense? And one thing, it seems, is Xenophanes was a monotheist. He decided that there can only be one, it should say, God. Right? Because God is an all-powerful being. To be all-powerful, you can't have two beings that are all-powerful. So he thought that it made no sense to have multiple gods. That is, there could only be one greatest being. And this is something that you'll see has an effect, or that, that, that conclusion certainly has an effect on Parmenides. Another issue that he brings up relates to the anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is the fact that you apply, that, especially in mythology, they applied human-like characteristics to the gods, to something that was not human. And Xenophanes kind of making fun of that whole uh, way of looking at things said something to the effect that if cows had hands and they could draw, they draw gods that look like cows. He also said that about Ethiopians. That if Ethiopians are drawing pictures of their gods, they're they're black. If it's Greeks, they're whites. It doesn't. He thinks it doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason for doing that. In addition to which, he in addition to that, Xenophanes weighs in on the issues of knowledge and skepticism. And in fact, he becomes a skeptic with regard to various things. And in fact, he gives a, he's, he's reputed to have given a, at least one skeptical argument about the views of Homer and Hesiod. He says, well, if you read the poems, Homer and Hesiod's gods behave immorally. But then he says, but wait a second. The gods do not behave immorally. The gods are examples of how you should behave. They can't be. Therefore, Homer and Hesiod's views about the gods are wrong. So Xenophanes has a tremendous influence on the world of philosophy, especially in bringing rationality and saying, you can question the myths. Now, the Milesians were coming up with alternative explanations, but they were not actually questioning the mythological accounts of gods. Here, Xenophanes is actually questioning those mythological accounts.